Can you imagine being frightened of every friendly animal you meet? Imagine rabies in Britain. All dogs will be leashed and muzzled. Foxes will be destroyed. Wildlife at risk. No animal may be moved in or out of the infected area. All cats will be restrained. Just one animal smuggled in could lead to all this. So if you suspect anyone of smuggling, tell the police. If rabies breaks out, any animal found loose will be seized, taken away, and if it is not claimed, destroyed. Rabies is a killer. We must keep rabies out. Attention, this is an official announcement. An outbreak of foot and mouth has been confirmed for this area. So take immediate precautions to stop it spreading to your stock. In particular, close off all entrances to your farm except the main one, across which you should lay a straw mat. Apply fresh disinfectant to it daily, provide facilities for disinfecting boots and vehicles, and keep all unnecessary visitors away. If you see any symptoms of foot and mouth in your stock, frothing, lameness, or anything unusual, take no chances. Phone us immediately. And please, everyone, keep away from farms. These are not telephone wires. They're overhead power lines carrying high voltages. Without them, lots of people wouldn't have any electricity. So when you go out to enjoy yourself, play safe and make sure there are no overhead lines about. Watch out! Oh, God. Those wires are alive! If you want to have fun and stay alive, keep away from overhead power lines. Then you know you'll be playing safe. This is an emergency. Day and night, the ambulances are bringing the sick and badly injured to the hospitals. It's my finger. I'm afraid you'll have to wait. The patient's heart begins to falter. Cardiac arrest. This is an emergency. Actually, I have nothing to pull the muscle. This is an emergency. If the heart team can get there in time, they can save a life. Excuse me. I'm afraid you'll have to wait. Anyone who goes to an emergency department will be seen. But the real emergencies come first. And you may have to wait. So contact your own doctor first. Terribly sorry I'm late. I know I had to wait hours for the bus. I am sorry. Oh, that's all right, Glenda. Oh, I'm so glad you could come along and star in my latest film. Is this a film what you wrote? Well, not exactly. Oh, what's it about? Blood. Blood? No, I can't. No, I'm sorry. No, I can't. I can't. No, it's the needle. The needle. Is that what you're afraid of? Please, as a friend, don't ask me to do this. I can't. The needle. I can't. No, I'm not. No, don't make me do this. Please, don't make me do this. Please. You're overacting. Please. How dare you? I am not overacting. No, really? Meet Miss Jackson. She's volunteered to give blood. Sit down, Glenda. You told me you'd take me to Hollywood. No, Cricklewood. Oh. So do I sign this now? I think it's very nice of you, Glenda, and I... I think it's very it. nice of me. Can we talk about this? No, come on. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye, Glenda. Hey. She's just going to test my blood now. I see. Mm. There you are. Is that all you give? No, no, that's just the start. That's oh, just to see, see if your iron level is okay. Oh, I see. All right? Thank you. Okay? 
Now it's your turn. Another fine mess you've got me into. <laughs> now, that didn't hurt, did it? Not hurt, no. no. <laughs> Was it painful? Not at all. So you For didn't once, mean... he told me the truth. <laughs> <laughs> nothing to it, is there? Absolutely nothing at all. Of course, it's the first time for you, isn't it? Not the first time for you, though. The second time, actually. I Only didn't... the second? Oh, yes. The way you've been going on, I thought you'd got one of those silver medals or well, bronze know. hearts or whatever they get. Well, it was just show business talk. <laughs> you came on the bus, didn't you? It's oh, because well... you were too mean to send a car. I'll give you the bus fare later. 27p. Will you take a check? <laughs> <laughs> I take back everything I said. <laughs> it's extremely easy, totally painless. I haven't felt this virtuous in a long time. Glenda, just because you're a blood donor, there's no need to make a production out of it. Oh, all right. Let's go and have some biscuits and tea urn. Right. Tea urn? Tea urn? Tea urn? I asked you not to do that. Drive you mad. That fat friend. This boy's a fool. Yeah. What do you think? You might know I've got a little daughter, and this is her, Francesca. Hello. <laughs> well, being a parent isn't all fun and games. They tell me I'm going through the uh, easy part at the moment. <laughs> they must be joking. You see, when she gets older, that's when I'm going to have to start trotting out all those stories about talking to strangers. Well, it's all very well. She can't be expected to know who the bad guys are, because she'll take kindly to any adult that's kind to her. So, you have to tell her things like not to talk to strangers, that somebody who gives you a sweet is not bound to be a nice person, and of course, smart girls don't accept lifts in strange cars, do they? And of course, she must tell you where she's going, and you must tell her when she's to get back. But it's not only little girls that oh. must know these things, is it? It's little boys as well. If I have sons, I'll be telling them the same things. So our children must learn to look after themselves, and we must tell them how to steer clear of the villain. Francesca, Francesca, say bye. Why do they do it? Well, I know what I'd like to do to them. Did they see anything nice, anything decent? They just have to spoil it. It's the same in the park. They knocked out all the lampposts. And who pays out? We do. Well, what's them doing if? Oh, say anything. What's the point? Kids do as they please. Well, look at the state of the new underpass. Well, what about the bus shelter? Oh, and how long has that been up? About a week. Is that? Oh, the police ought to do something. It's the parents, isn't it? Well, we're parents and our children don't go around vandalising. Well, we hope they don't. But we don't always know where they are, not all the time, do we? If I thought one of mine was behaving I like think this, it's the I'd... schools. Oh, it makes me so oh. angry. Try telling them off. They'll laugh in your face. You certainly can't reason with them. Right. So there's nothing we can do about it. Well, I, I just don't believe it. There is something you can do. Ring the police immediately. You need not give your name, but dial 999. You might save someone's property. You could save someone's life. Judy, I thought the faucets were away. They are, to the end of the month. Well, they've got visitors. Must have come back unexpected. If something doesn't look right, tell the police. Hundreds of cars are stolen every day. If you're suspicious, Note the number and tell the police. If there's something funny going on, dial 999. There are many hundreds of calls every 24 hours. Everyone is investigated. Often there's nothing to it, but sometimes you save a neighbor an awful lot of trouble. The police don't mind how many calls they get, and remember, the next call might be about your house. That was a game and a half, wasn't it, Fred? Yeah, but we should have had it sewn up by half-time. 
What we need is a bit more skill up front. Hey, how are you getting home? Bus? No, I've got the new car with me. New, eh? <laughs> you must be doing all right. Well, it's in fantastic nick, though. Only 10,000 on the clock. Goes like a bomb. Yeah? I'll tell you what, I'll give you a lift home. Thanks. We can hear the football results on the radio. Only just around the corner. You can't miss it, it's white. That's funny. I could have sworn I left it here. Remember, lock your car. Check the doors, the windows, the boot. And please, take the keys with you. Watch out. There's a thief about. <laughs>